What's poppin' is Enzo McFly. It's your girl, your car keys, I am. Chill with a new man, this your boy Ian. What's up, what's up? It's your girl Ingrid here. It's your boy Mikey Iso. What's up? It's your girl Desiree Simone. Hit 2-2 Radio, man. Y'all know what's going down. The biggest blood in America. Hey, man, you already know who it is, DJ Me What's going on, man? It's comedian Jeff Shelley. What's good, words, homie DJ Chosen. Say, man, it's Wapi Puerto Rico, man. Baby boy, baby girl. It's your girl, Be Simona with Catch 22. What's up, Houston? It's your boy, Quay. I just wrapped a dope-ass interview with Catch 22. I guess I'm Monkey Farm, man. I did your money. I, whatever y'all want to call me. I'm out here with Catch 22 Radio. We just went done with an exclusive uh, interview. Uh, man, I got a, a hot project that's going to come out uh, real, real soon. I just want to make sure all the music right, so it's coming. Follow me. Look me up. Underscore he Too Hollywood. You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. C Catch 22 radio show on 92kills.com. And we are back. It's Man K Sunday. I'm yeah. here with Plus. I'm here with Brian. Yeah. Uh, and Ladybug over there. How you go Ladybug, Ladybug over there. You know, David the cameraman is in the studio. Yeah. There's no ladies in here. Uh, we have another dope interview coming up, y'all. He is multi talented. For sure. Uh, he ripped up the field. Now he ripping up tracks. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Armonte Foreman. What's it's happening, bro? Field, man. What's good? What's good? Man, well, chilling. We're sorry for having you out there for so long. But I said my dog was out there. He going to leave us, man. So I'm glad you stayed and chilled <laughs> out with us, uh, man. Nah, man. It's a blessing to be here, man. I'm, I'm excited to be right here. That's real. That's real. That's real. All right, man. I see that you were actually playing for UT. You done with football or you still going to stick with it? What you got going on? Well, right now, uh, I'm going back to Canada. Or whatever to play in the CFL. That's gonna be dope. Uh, but yeah, um, man, right now I'm just been working on this uh this rap, trying to stick to that really right now and, and do off season training or whatever. So I'm really just trying to figure out my lane right now because when I came out of college, there was a lot of stuff that was going on, a lot of negative stuff around my name, and that's why I'm kind of in the position that I'm in right now. But I feel like you know what I'm saying. If, if football don't work out, cause that always been. Playing A for me, you know what right. I'm saying? Just football, football, football. If I don't make it in football, what else I'm gonna do? I don't know. Right. So then my partners and them, they was rapping and whatever, doing all this. And I just came to like, man, I'm just gonna give it a shot. Like I'm just gonna try. Like I just wanna have fun. I ain't. This ain't really my thing, but I'm just do it. Right. Then I went to Canada last year at the end of the season. Uh, season was pretty much over with, but I just went out there. They wanted to see me, so I was on a practice roster out there. And while I was out there the whole time, some just told me, like, man, just write music. Just do something. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I just started writing music or whatever. And, like, when I came home, first day I came back down here, I just got in the booth. And right. then my partners, they ain't really know what to expect. And when I recorded my first couple songs in there, they were just like, boy, you, I don't know what they got into you, boy, but you got something. Right. And then after that point on, it was just like, man, I'm kind of feeling this, this rapping stuff. I know it's a lot of money in it. Yeah, I ain't never had nothing, so you feel me? Like I, I, I got to keep on grinding. Yeah, okay. I, see, I see a lot of athletes. It's a lot of athletes that's really rappers, that's really multi-talented. Like Facts. it's a lot of athletes that, like you know, football, basketball, whatever was was top priority. But they going in that studio and they they really Killing. making some good music. You know what I'm saying? And I I salute you for that, bro. That's that's real. So how do you deal with the stigma saying that athletes shouldn't rap or can't rap? Uh, I mean, I just feel like whatever you choose to do, if, if you want to rap, then do it. Like, it don't matter what nobody got to say or whatever, because I feel like as a black community, and I know all athletes ain't black, but a lot of them are. And right. I feel like we we not just subjected to one thing. We It's not only one thing that we could do with our life. Right. I feel like it's multiple things that we could do with our life. And I feel like once you find out what it is that you really want to do, then you could really just take off and do that. And when I started understanding that people will listen to my music or that, that they kind of like it a little bit, mm -hmm. it was just like, that's all I need. That's all I need to see somebody be like, yeah, you got it. And then I'm going to do the rest from that point. I'm going to give it everything I got. I'm going to go hard because, uh, like I said before, I ain't never had nothing. So, like, I'm trying to get to this money, however. And obviously football ain't really working out in the way that I wanted it to work out. So it's like I'm not about to just – just sit down and be like, all right, football ain't working out, then I don't know what else I'm going to do. Nah, right. because I got kids. I got to feed them, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it just, I don't know, rap just came alive for me. And I thank God that, you know what I'm saying, he gave me this hidden talent because I ain't never know I could do this. Right. right. So who was, the? I guess, the first person that you felt like uh, kind of co-signed you or, or, or plugged you 
that you was like, okay, now I know that that I can really I can make a living off of this. Oh, I mean, like I said, it was just really from my friends or whatever. Like they were just telling me, like you know what I'm saying, that, that I could do it. Like right. and they like my music, and I know, like especially my brother, my brother Deontay Foreman, Houston Texas running back for y'all that don't know. But um, I know he gonna always be honest with me no matter what. And when I got his approval with the rap, I was like, I know, I know I'm good because that's what we do. Like I never had an idol growing up that was a an NFL player. Right. right. I never had that. I never had. I mean, I like Kobe Bryant and uh, Allen Iverson playing basketball, but I never had an idol playing football. My biggest idol in my whole life was always Lil Wayne. That was my mm. idol. That's who I That's looked crazy. up to. And it is crazy because I always played football. Everything, everybody told me, you're going to go to the league. You're going to play in the field. But I was always looking up to rap. Mm-hmm. Rappers. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it always just been in my blood. It always been hidden in me. It's just like I never really gave rap a shot. So once I did, it was like, man, I, I, I like it. You know what I'm saying? So is Wayne your favorite artist? Uh... He, he used to be, but not really right now. Not <laughs> yeah, really right now. No, 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 let me ask you. Let me ask you. How did you feel about the Carter Five? Did you like it? I liked the Carter Five. I don't really think it was a disappointment. It's just like people ain't really heard a lot from Wayne right. in a long time. So it's like you ain't really know what to expect. But I feel like if you really been a, a close fan of Wayne, like I have, and just paid attention to like pretty much his whole career, like if you really listen to the Carter Five, you're going to start piecing stuff together that, other people might not piece together. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So the, some of the stuff that he was talking about in it, like, and that's what I got from it. Like a lot of stuff was kind of coming together. Now that I done got older and stuff, I go back and listen to his old music and be like, oh, okay, okay, now, I now I get yeah, what you yeah, were yeah. saying on that yeah, part, yeah, yeah, whatever. Because yeah. I feel like my mind just got a, you know, a lot more smarter, or whatever. So I could really understand what he was saying back then. Because I listened to a song back then and was like, oh, I like the song, but really not registering everything that he really was saying. That's why I think Lil Wayne's so great because you can still go back to songs right now and be like, man, like that's what I he meant. That. Yeah, you know that's what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you had to pick. Three projects that you had to be locked in a room with for let's say a year. What three projects would you pick? From Wayne? Or period. Or, hey, period. Yeah. Yeah. period. Man. You can only pick three. I'm gonna go with the Carter Three. So uh man. Um that's tough. I don't <laughs> know, cause I like Gates too. Gates okay. are, I I fuck with Gates a whole lot. Um so really, any Gates project, but uh, I like the last one that he just came out with, the uh, Luca, Luca Brasi. Yeah, I like that one. That's hard. Um, and really, I listen to other artists, but me. You know what I'm saying? So I want to listen to me. I listen to me all day long because I know the time and effort that I put into it, and I know that like stuff that I come up with, and when I be writing songs, it's like it's a shock to me too. Like, damn, like, how you come up with that? Because I used to think that about other people. Like, how right. they come up with that? How they do that? I don't think I could do that. Right. And then it's like when you just sit down and put your all into something, you're going to start seeing, like, it's a lot of different stuff that you could do, a lot of different stuff that you could say. And from my struggle that I came up with, it's like I got a lot of stuff to talk about and a lot of stuff that I used to think to myself that I never really uh, say to other people. I just put it in the music, and then everybody going to feel their own way about it. So I definitely listen to myself. All so day. music has become more like therapeutic for you than, like I guess, uh, is it more of a hustle or or is it more therapeutic? Both. I think it's both because I, I talk about everything in my music. Like it don't matter. Like I could, like you could be whoever, and you could be in the studio with me, and I say something about you. If you done something to me, I'm gonna speak on it. Like I don't care mm. like about none of that because you know what you did. So it don't really matter about like you know what I'm saying like. Either you gonna like the music or you ain't. If you mad because I said one thing about you, everybody in the world don't know who you is. So I don't really like. If you worried about oh well, what people gonna think about me, then you know whatever you did, that's you was really wrong for doing what you did. <laughs> yeah, because right, everybody right. else don't know you. Only I know you. So you gotta. To me, I feel like you gotta accept what you did, and then we're gonna move forward. So are you a twin? Yeah, I'm a twin. Yeah, that's yeah. your, your twin brother. Yeah. All right. Is this y'all too? Nah, I got a. Uh, I got a little brother. Okay. He playing about yeah. to you is his name Justin, right? Justin Allen? Yeah, Justin Allen. Yeah, Justin Allen. How you end up linking with Justin? Uh through my brother D. Uh they got got connected. I don't really know how, but I just linked up with Justin really through my brother and Justin he be training or whatever and yeah, he just came that, yeah. became like a big brother to me. And he was just kind of mentoring me through, you know, my tough times with football, not really knowing what was gonna happen. 
And we just stayed, we just stayed grinding or whatever. He was helping me, you know what I'm saying? Like with all my work, the work that I was putting in to get into the NFL. And it just ain't happened, but I did get a shot with the CFL and I thank Justin a lot for that because, you know what I'm saying, he had me ready. Right. That's 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 dope. So um I do want to ask you your take on, you know, with all the it is off season and you know, it's free agents and you know, OBJ just went to the to the Browns, yeah. you know. Um with that being said, do you feel like like the uh because they you know eventually like the Giants just was like he's a he was a cancer, so we had to get rid of him. Yeah. Do you feel like that they only use you for so long and then once you're no good to them, they, they paint you like as a bad person? Um I mean it just depends. Like I understand that it's a business, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And the people got the power to do anything to anybody in that business, in that field. So I feel like it don't really matter, like, oh, they're back them, they winning because they got that bag. It don't matter, like, about where you end up going, like, ultimately, like, it just depends. Everybody different. Everybody can tell you, yeah, I want to win, I want to win. A lot of them people want the money in the league. That's what they right. want because they a lot of dudes that never had nothing. So right. they want to see what the money like first. Once the money get right, then they want to win. You right. know what I'm saying? But I feel like right now, Odell Beckham, he one of the highest paid receivers in the league. One of the highest paid players in the league. Definitely. Just, just like Antonio Brown. Like, that don't matter. No, like, they already made their money. So, like, it don't matter what them people say. They right. got their money or whatever. So, now it's just can, he, can they help your team win. I think both of them can help their team win. So, I think that's all that really matters. All right. So, can I get a Super Bowl prediction from you real quick? The Houston Texans. Houston Texans. No, I'm you talking about Buggy. No, I'm coming. You buy it. You buy it. No, you buy it. No, bro. Okay, yeah. I'll take four so in Pro Bowl. Okay, so, <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. So, the Houston Texans plays who in the Super Bowl? Man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's, man. I want to see us play the Cowboys. I, 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 I want one day to see a Texans, like, Super Bowl. Y'all got to get there first. So I'm saying the Texans gonna get there, man. We've been so. saying this since 2002. It's cool. Uh, <laughs> We've been having a lot of yeah, injuries. Cowboys, a lot man. of injuries, bro. A lot of injuries. That's true. That's fact. So with the name Money, bro, where did you come up, or why did you come up with the Sam's gonna run with the name Money? Uh, really, I've been having the name Money since I can remember, man. Like that was just my nickname growing up. I think my mama told me uh, I got an older brother on my daddy's side. And he used to always come around or whatever when we were small. And he used to tell, like, he used to call me Money. He couldn't pronounce my real name. Oh, so okay. he used to always call me Money, Money. And my mom was just like, so they, oh, everybody just stuck it. with it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Money just always been me. And, like, a lot of people never call me Armonte. They don't call me that. Yeah. A lot of people call me money, money. But it's like nowadays, now that I got old, it's like money. People look at that. It's weird when I tell them my name, money. They be like, that ain't your real name. What's your real name? <laughs> so I had to get used to telling people my real name because a lot of people didn't know it. Or I'm just not really used to saying it out loud to people. So it came off weird when I told people my real name. Right. Okay. All right. So, do are you working on any projects here that's coming that's dropping like in the future? Yeah. Um. Pretty much, I already got a plenty of songs ready to go. It's just mm-hmm. about getting everything ready to drop. You know, like I said, I just started rapping, so I'm still trying to figure out everything that go into all the music and stuff, and how to drop the music, how to release the music, everything. But the stuff I be focusing on the most is getting the music right first. Like, right. I want to make sure the music right because you could put it out whenever because the music ain't going to die. Like, only me and a few select people done heard the music. Right. But not everybody done heard it, so it don't really matter when it drops because it's going to be new to everybody when it come out. So I so, just want to make sure it's right. So, like, watching LeBron, uh, like, executive produce 2 chains like, like this album, do you think it's, it's important to have, like, an executive producer somebody else's ears on a project that might hear something that you don't? Yeah. I believe that. It, well, for me, and at the point that I'm at right now, I feel like that'll be something that'll be good for me because, like I said, I don't really know everything that go into it. Like they might hear some or, you know, have this idea that I never think of because I just started, and they probably been around it a lot longer than me. So I feel like once I just get used to everything, get used to the music and everything that you got to put into it. And, and I feel like I could do everything on my own because I know I'm gonna give it everything I got and I'm gonna stand on it ten toes because this all I'm a, this all I got. All right, so you're doing this all independent. Who's the label? Who's the team? Who you rocking with? Man, right now it's just IDM, IDM the gang. Man, I got my partner T Wave in the back. Uh, he rap with me, uh, but we ain't no group or nothing. He do his thing, I do my thing. But like we grew up together. This like this been my brother since like second grade. You know what I'm saying? So all of my partners really we've been. 
friends since at least second grade. You know what I'm saying? So it's ain't really no new people in the circle or whatever. And like he been rapping way before me since like high school. And you know what I'm saying? I just been seeing a lot more grind from him. You know what I'm saying? Since I started rapping. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, and I like that because now we grinding together at the same thing. Because yeah. it was just we played football together growing up. We did all that growing up. But it's like football never really worked out for him. You know what I'm saying? Just. Right. It wasn't his calling to go play college sports. But he always had the, the talent to rap. And we've been knowing that for a long time. Right. So we just kind of stayed on him about, you know, giving it his all, putting everything into the rap. And then like I had a talk with all of them and told them that I was going to start rapping. And like, he was like the first one. He was like, bro, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go hard. And I told him, like, we're going to go hard for sure. And that's what we've really been doing. That's real. So a dream future for you. If you can have anybody on the track with you that you feel like is going to top the top 40 charts, who would it be? Man, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Gates. I'm going to have to go with Gates. I'm going to have to go with – I'll do a song with Wayne for sure. Uh, I mean, anybody really. You know what I'm saying? But them two for sure, for sure. Because them just – I can hear I, you on a song with Gates. I feel like them two, them two artists right there really – form me in a way. They help, you know what I'm saying, kind of form, you know, the way I go about my life, you know, how I want my life to be. All right, big dog. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Uh, at underscore he too Hollywood on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, that's what it is, underscore he too Hollywood. That's real. That's dope. Well, we're about to go into another mix with uh, DJ Nice Knees. Uh, <laughs> oh, if you didn't know that's DJ Nice Knees. Oh, actually, spin your music. He's 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 plugged here in Houston. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, gotta get that out there. It's Man Cave Sunday. Yeah, we, when we come back, we have another dope interview. It's Catch Twenty Two Radio. Let's get it. Yeah. You're, you're now rocking with the voice of the South. Catch Twenty Two Radio Show on ninety two kills dot com.